bless you for being here. Thank you, fellas. Thanks for coming to see me. Now, uh, Dave, I, this is a big, this is a big thing to be on this couch because Giancarlo is one in one of your favorite yeah. all-time television shows. Is this right? It is right, and he's probably my favorite character in the show. So, it's just an yeah. Honor. What a show! What a show! Great. Thank you. Every, it's, every from episode. Breaking Bad to Better Call Saul, it's 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 incredible. And what you've done with that character of Gus, I think, is. It's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's amazing. Did you know when you got the script and that part came your way, did you instinctively think, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do with this character? I had some instincts. I had a lot of questions, but my instinct was to play against a stereotype, make this guy someone who observed uh, more than he spoke. Uh, that's why the silences that become in, in between the lines that I say are so penetrating. I have this theory that people um, get uncomfortable when you really, really take them in. Mm. When you drink them in completely, they, they feel as if a little bit intimidated by you. And so I can see everything about you right now. <laughs> I'm looking right through you. And I want to tell you... Oh, God. ...that I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> this time, and this time only. And just watching this, you know, has been spectacular. <laughs> it's good to see. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dave, I'm so thrilled that you're here. You know, I've told you personally, I'm such a huge fan. You're originally from Philadelphia City, which is uh, from yeah. Philadelphia, a city I've not visited before. Really? No, I've never been. How does it compare to Los Angeles, Oof. would you say? What's, what's, what's it like in Philly? You know, there's a, there's a northeast grit. I would say that the biggest difference is, like, the people. You know what I mean? When I'm in L.A., I feel everyone's so nice that it's actually a little bit annoying. Yeah. Uh, it's like, but, you know... It, it, when you're walking across the street in LA, even if it's not your time to walk, the car will stop and, and, and wave you, you know. And I, in Philly, if it's not your time, they'll try to like clip you and get the insurance money. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and I like that. I, I'm more into that vibe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's a sort of, in Philly, I feel like it's a little bit like London, where like they'll stab you in the front. Yeah, I, I'm very. <laughs> you know, whereas here, they'll just stab you in the back. Yeah. Go, that was amazing! Yeah. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> whereas... I'm proud to be from there. It's a, it's a great city. Yeah, now, uh, I didn't know this about you, Giancarlo. You started your career on Broadway. You were in 13 Broadway shows as a kid. Yes, I was. How old were you when you first went on Broadway, and how did this. How did this come about? I started at seven years old. My father and mother were getting a divorce after 11 years of marriage. I was watching a show with my brother called Gigantor, um, and a commercial came on, and we looked and went, oh, I could do that. We could do that. And five days later, we had an audition for a show called Maggie Flynn. Went out on the stage to audition for Morton DaCosta, a very famous white-haired director, who um, we, I, I had no song to sing except, happy birthday to you, happy Classic. birthday to you. And I sang it like that, and they sent me to the right side of the stage. My brother sang it a little louder. They sent him to the left side of the stage. And I'm standing there scratching my head, <laughs> and all these people are going to the other side of the stage. I'm on the wrong side of the stage. Mm. So my manager stuck her big hand in my back and shoved me to the edge of the stage, and I stood up and I went, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. And they said, oh, my goodness, go to the other side of the stage. Oh. And I got that gig, and that's how it all started. Wow. Now, Dave, talk of music. I'm excited about this. You've been working very hard on the new Little Dicky album. Yeah. Uh, you've been in the studio. Set the stage for me. What's it like when you're Oof. in the studio? What's the vibe? What are the, what are the must-haves in there? It's incredibly anticlimactic. It's, oh, really? Yeah. I, like, wake up at around 9 a.m. Uh, that's when I do my best rapping, like 9 to, like, 11 a.m. Mm. And, you know, there, it really is a coin flip if I have too stuffed of a nose on any given day and then I have to, like, address the stuffness with... I have, like, different sprays. By the way, I could use you on a song if you really want to sing. I, can <gasps> make... I would love that. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. I would love it. Oh, my God. This cool. would be huge. Yeah. Totally. Look at this. You're on a huge record now. I, I would... Oh, man. Thank you. It's a big... Now I owe Gus a song. It's just... Say, <laughs> this has been... So this album's been, what, six years? Yeah, either? it's been a long time coming. OK, um, so... so it's, when, I'm do just, we, when do we think we might... Honestly, it? I can't even answer that question. It's just not done yet. And at this point, I might as well really make it ideal because it's been, like, truly seven years. And I'm sorry to all my fans. I'm working as hard as I can every day. It might seem like I'm, I'm not working hard on it, but I really am. It's just hard to multitask with the show. Yeah. So it's like, you know, every day, if I'm working 16 hours on the show, it's hard to come home and you have eight hours of sleep and, like, somehow figure out how to write a song. So it's, it's really... Well, guess what? What's we up? will wait for it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> we will! Thank we you. will wait, right? 
It'll it's pay off. It's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. I'm really excited. I've been doing my best work the last six months, and I, I feel really good right now. Oh, I'm excited for it. Yeah. I really am. Now, Giancarlo, let's talk about Better Call Saul. This is it. The final six episodes. You've been part of the, the, the Breaking Bad universe since 2009. Has it sunk into you that it's, that it's almost over? Just six episodes to go. I just, I'm a little choked up. I don't want to talk about it. It's over. It's going to be over. I never want to say it. Uh, well, Vince Gilligan said to me, um, it is not over till it's over. Well, what does that mean? Yeah, is that a clue? Know. And for me, I think it may be a clue, because I take all of that as an actor. You take that really personally, like there could be something else. Uh, for me, I feel like I got a chance in season six to explore a more vulnerable, different Gustavo Fring. We're all used to, Vince said to me, we're used to not knowing about this guy, and that's the mystery and what really makes great television. And so this season, I got to explore what I had not been able to in many seasons of Breaking Bad and, and Better Call Saul, and that was vulnerability. Lalo Salamanca is a threat to me, and I always control the chaos, like I'm doing now sometimes, maybe, and steer what's happening. But in this season, I'm vulnerable, I'm nervous, I'm not the same Gustavo Fring you've ever seen before. So you get a, a new, more nuanced performance and, and a wider range of emotion behind Gus. I feel honored and in joy and in wonder like a little kid that I've had the ability to be a part of this show in this way, and I hate to see it go. However, in my brain, there is another show, and that show is called The Rise of Gus. <gasps> I would love it if that came true. It's an amazing performance.